Hi guys. Uh, today I thought we'd go over some bead looming. I really like to bead looming. I really enjoy it and I wanted to share it with you guys because you can come up and after you're done with it you can make some really beautiful things. It's kind of uh, confusing and complicated at times and a lot of people are kind of uh, intimidated by it because there's so many the process is so involved. But once you figure it out and get it going, you can make some really beautiful stuff. Uh, for example, I have shown you this previously. This is just one of the bracelets I've made bead looming. And you just, you know, has a little snap on it. Really beautiful, flat. It's basically flat bead work and it's so fun to wear and it really impresses people. And then like a uh, for another example, I have also made, uh, this is one of the barrettes that I have made, and just the little clasp on the back. So you can make some really cool stuff with it. You could do, you know, like bracelets, barrettes, you can do like an edging for purses, you can do lanyards, and just the, there's a lot of possibilities with uh, bead looming. So I'm going to go through first some of the materials you're going to need to get kind of started going with bead looming. Uh, of course, first of all, you're gonna need a loom. And some people make their own looms, they're quite easy to make. Uh, I'm not one that does woodworking or anything like that, so I'm not that talented at those things. But if you do have the skills and the tools, you can maybe look it up and see online. Some places might give you some tutorials on how to make uh, bead looms. But this one, I bought this a long time ago. Uh, I've been doing this since like 2001, I want to say. So this is a really old one, but they still make them like these. And this is the smaller bead loom. And this one I use, you know, for my bracelets, my barrettes, anything like that. And then I do have a much larger one. You know, it has the two little knobs. This one is so large, it has three knobs on the bar there. And so this one you could use to actually make a purse or a large piece because, I mean, that's the width you're going to get with that. So, I mean, that's a lot of beads. You can do something quite large with a loom like this. I don't use this one very often, but when I do, you can create some really, really cool things with it. But today we're going to work with the little guy, just this little guy. And uh, basically with your loom... These are kind of uh, limited onto the width you can do. If you were to make a your own, like maybe like more of a frame type of loom, you could do much larger pieces. You could do multiple pieces. Uh, you'll have to look into that on your own. But this is what I have today, and so my width of anything that I can do is going to be limited to the width of the loom. So say you have something that you want to make that's larger then this width, you're going to have to have a larger a loom, a loom to do that. So lengthwise, it's not, it doesn't really matter because you can move these little bars around and you can make it as long as you want. But widthwise, you have to keep it within the size of your loom. The second thing that you're going to need, obviously, is a way to uh, load the loom because you're going to have strings going all up and down here to weave in and out of. And what I use for that is just the basic. I got this at the local craft store, and it's just a, like a stringer thread. And it was by the looms that they have for sale there. And uh, I want to, you want to use like a thicker thread to load your loom because you will use the Nymo too also if you're working with smaller beads. Uh, like, for example, these were size 11 beads that I used to make the barrette. And what I did was I loaded the loom with the thicker thread, and then I actually loomed the beads on there with my Nymo thread. So I was able to use the thicker stuff to make it nice and sturdy to hold it all together and then actually loom the beads on with the Nymo because... The stuff won't go through, the big stuff won't go through the 11 size beads. And then, like for example, this bracelet, these were size 8 beads. So they're much bigger beads. So I was able to use my thick thread for everything on this. And that's what I'm going to show you because these are a little bigger beads. It's going to be a little easier to film it and show it 
and get that kind of a little easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. So this is just a thicker thread, and like with this, you can see it was like a four pack, and it, you can get it in black and different colors, so you can get colors that are going to match your project and the beads that you're going to put in on. Like if you were going to do white background beads, you'd want to use the white. If you're going to do back black, you could use the black, so it kind of blends in better, and you're not seeing so much of the thread come through. And like I said, that's mainly for loading up your loom, your loom to. Uh, get it all the threads put on you want to use your thicker threads because it's going to be a lot of beads and it's going to be heavy and it's going to take a lot of i guess abuse from the beads and it's going to you're going to need something strong to make sure that it doesn't snap apart and you know, all your beads fall off but to actually bead i would recommend if you're doing a size 11 um if you're doing anything bigger or uh, smaller than a size 8 you're going to want to go with your Nymo thread to actually put the beads on because the, you're going to get stuck and it's going to get a lot of friction and you're not going to be able to pull your needle through and it's going to be frustrating and that's probably going to be it. You're going to be like, okay, I'm done, you know, get frustrated and quit. So we want to keep you going at it. So we want to give you the right uh, tools to do so. You're also going to need some beeswax and some kind of scissors, snippers, whatever you have to cut your threads. And then another thing that you're going to need is a, I like to use a looming needle and I like the big eye needles. And when I loom, you know, you can't stitch with these because they're not, they're too flimsy. They bend really easy and they're too flimsy and they will break and this won't go through anything. So these are really nice for looming though. And the big eyes are nice. Let's see if I can get it apart here. Um, maybe, but they open up, it's a giant eye, instead of having a tiny little eye to work through with your thread, they have, I don't know if you can see that, they open up really big, and you just stick your thread on through there, and just, it's super easy to load, and open up, and get your thread on, and these are not, this is a longer one, you can get shorter ones than these, but for looming, I like to use a longer one, because when you're going through, it's actually goes all the way and you have some excess and it's easy to pull through and you don't have to go up and kind of maneuver around to get your needle through your work. And uh, of course you're going to need beads. So whatever beads you want to use, you, I'm using a size 8. You can use a bigger size, you can use a smaller size, whatever works for you. Uh, I like the size 8 because I just think they look really nice. But the patterns are going to come out a little differently, so you're going to have to do some measurements and, and things like that. Uh, size 11 also obviously look absolutely amazing, but they're a lot smaller to work with, and it's going to take a lot more beads. So it's up to you. You could use size, I mean, you could even go to size 6 if you wanted. Uh, it's, that's going to be really big beads, but you can if you want to do that. If you have a hard time seeing or, you know... Just use what works for you, you know, and make whatever you have available and on hand. Also, don't go out and, so you don't have to get, go out and spend a lot of money just on one project. And another thing you're going to need is a pattern. And patterns, you can get a lot of patterns online for free. A lot of people offer them. Like I said before in other videos, though, you cannot sell those patterns. You can give them as gifts. You can wear them yourself. But you can't make any money off of those. Those are somebody else's creation. There are uh, books you can get that have patterns in them. Like I got that one book I showed you guys previously, my bead applique book. And it's got a whole bunch of different patterns in it. I got my pattern all set up for our uh, bread that we're going to make. And you can also get, uh, I don't have an example of it, but you can get copy paper online uh like a graph paper, like a bead graph paper, and you just need to search uh, free printable bead, bead looming paper or something along those lines, and some things should come up, and there, I know there's a few websites out there that offer uh, free graph paper where you can design your own, and that you can do whatever you want with. You can put it on something and sell it. It's up to you, whatever you want to do, or just make something nice for somebody in a certain theme or colors that they like. Like with this one, and you, you, you know, you could probably even use like a graph paper if you were to go to the store and pick up some graph paper and you could draw your own 
picture on that. And you're going to want to know how many, how, how long the, it's, or how uh, wide it's going to be because that's going to kind of gauge what, how you're going to draw your pattern. So say you want to be 10 beads wide, you're going to have to draw your pattern in those 10 little squares because that's going to be the width of your pattern. Like for example, this one here is 15 beads wide. And so my pattern had to be 15 beads wide. So whatever you're doing for a pattern, just make sure that it's going to be the proper amount to be the right size for whatever you're making, like a bracelet or a barrette, that it's not going to be too big or too small, and also that it'll fit on your loom. So those are uh, very important parts of designing your pattern. And when you do design your pattern, you know, you can draw it in. You can use, I use colored pencil, and that way you can get the colors in of the colors that you're going to want, and it can give you an idea of what it's going to look like and if you're going to like the outcome of what you've drawn. And if you need to change the colors, you can change your colors around. This one here was not, these are not the colors that were recommended for the pattern. I, ch I changed the colors on here because I wanted different colors. And there was pink, and I don't have a pink uh, bead that size. So it's kind of, it's based on what you want to do. Just kind of let your creative juices flow and get into it and draw and make some cool patterns. Or like I said, you can also find some online that are, are free to print out. Now... As far as uh, supplies, that's pretty much all you're going to need. You don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of different things. The looms are pretty inexpensive. I think you can get some of these for around like $10. Like I, It's been years since I've bought one, so I'm not sure. But when I got this one, I, I know it was really cheap. And you can get fancier ones, not just these metal ones. But this one, I swear to God, I've had this since 2001. And it is still just like the day I got it. It's in great shape. It's held up and it does the job so you don't need to go spend a lot on a loom you know and if it's something that you're trying I wouldn't recommend because you might not like it and then you're spending all this money on a loom and then you have a loom set in there that you're never going to use again so don't go getting crazy with going out and buying a bunch of stuff you don't have to do that so just like your basics you know you just need your basics try out if you like it you can later on move up and buy fancier things if you want that's all up to you I find that simple is the best when it comes to these things now, um, I'm going to get set up here so I can show you how to load it. So I will be right. So I got my loom set up here. Well, not set up, but setting here. And I'm going to need to start loading my loom. So I got my thread. And as far as my size, the size I'm going for my project, since it's a barrette, I only need about that size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little further than that just so I have something to work with when I take it off and tie off and things like that. So for the size of them, I'm going to go about this length probably. And so what I do is I just snip that first length and then I add, since it's going to be 11 rows long, you're going to have, I'm going to have to do 12 because you want one extra from what your pattern says. So since it's a pattern of 11 wide, I'm going to have to do 12 threads every single time. That's every single time. It doesn't matter what pattern you're doing. Say you're doing 24, you're going to have to do 25. If you do a width of 10, you're going to have to do 11 threads. you got to have that extra thread to grab the beads when you go under and over it. So... What I do is I'll take it and I'll measure it, that one piece. Now some people will wrap and wrap and wrap, but I don't do that because if I need extra length, I can't twist that to get that extra length. So I do it one string at a time. I know it's time consuming and I know a lot of people don't do it that way, but that's just how I do it. So I got my thread here and I just kind of measured, kind of eyeball it. If you're doing something longer, you're going to want to make it, like I said before, like about a foot longer than what your pattern calls for, depending on how you're tying it off. Now, I'm not, I'm not doing the traditional tie-off with these. I do mine a little bit. I do mine a little bit different. 
Hope you could you could hear me there. My mic fell down there. So what 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 I was saying was, I just kind of eyeball my measurements. But if you're doing something like a a bracelet and you're tying it off traditionally and things like that, like a lanyard or something, you you always want to make it about a foot longer than what your measurements are. So say you have something that's say 12 inches long, which is long. But if you're doing something say 12 inches long, you're gonna want to add a foot to that. If you're doing something about six inches long. You know, you want to give yourself enough to be able to cut it off and tie it off and do whatever you're going to do for your your in your uh, finishing. So for me right now, this is about the length I'm going to do. And I've already cut some out here. I think I got about nine of them here. But like I said, you always want to do one more than the amount on your row. So I need 11. And I think I have nine. I'm going to double check. One, two, three, four. I got nine here. So I need two more. So what I do is I just kind of take my, I like to keep my bobbin in my lap so it doesn't roll away from me. But for video purposes, we're going to have it up here on the table. Uh, I just kind of, you know, your ends don't have to be perfect. You're going to cut those off anyway. So just as long as you get your length. So that makes 10 there. Move that aside. I need one more here for 11. I think I lost one. Yep, I lost one here. You always kind of want to pinch it kind of tight so you don't lose some on the way. I'll put pin back. I kind of lost, I think I lost one or two there. And I'll always double check how many I've cut too to make sure I have enough. And you know, this you don't need perfection. You just need the proper amount of thread. And there might be an easier way to do it, but this is just how I do it. Like I said, I'm a self-taught, so it just, uh, this is just how I have always done it. Those kind of came out on me. And this is probably the most complicated, time consuming part of bead looming right here is getting all your threads going and getting them ready to load. Because it's just, there's so many threads involved. There's, it's a lot, it's time consuming. When you got a big piece, say 20 across, you're going to be cutting 21 threads, you know. And, there might be an easier way to do it, but this is just how I do it, and this isn't a bad way to do it, especially with a smaller piece. I'm just kind of, and my thread's a little curly from it being on the bottom there. It'll straighten out when we get it on the loom. Okay, I think that's all of them. I'm going to double check here real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, and 11. So I got 11. I'm going to need 12 because mine's... Let me double check, check my pattern. Okay, so my pattern calls for 11 wide. So i got to have 12. So I do need one more thread here. And everybody does everything differently, but this is just how I do mine. And a lot of people think this is a, probably a hard way to do it, but I like to do it this way, and here in a minute I can show you why that is. Let me count these again. 11 and 12. All right, so we got our 12 threads here. And what I do is I just tie a knot here on the end. It's kind of hard to do with all the fringy stuff flying around out yeah. Make sure they're all attached. None of them have knots or anything. I just kind of wrap it around my finger and bring it on through. Just kind of bring it down to where it's not too far up on the thread. All right, so we got our first knot in. 
Now, I'm going to set that just to the side here. And what I like to do, everybody blooms differently, but this is what I found, found works well for me, is I take a little bit of masking tape, and I just take a couple strips. You can kind of probably see on my loom the wear and tear from the tape. But I like to tape mine down to the table when I load it, and then the loom's not running around and sliding around, and it helps get it nice and tight and doesn't fall off the table or anything like that, and it kind of keeps it in place as you're trying to get the loom loaded. So look at that. Kinda, I kind of tape it down. You don't need to tape it down too tight. But see, it holds it nice and tight there. I hope you guys can see everything I'm doing here. Now, what I like to do, it's kind of hard to get a good angle, full length angle here, is I, now I got my, my knot tied on this end, and I'm going to tie a knot on this other end also. I just kind of, I kind of pull it taunt, pull, pull my threads all taunt together, and then I'll tie a knot over here. And that way it's really easy to get onto the loom. Let's kind of bring it. There we go. And so I'm going to. So you got a knot on each end now. Makes it nice and easy. Pull it a little bit. Make sure we got it nice and straight. And I kind of just separate that in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I stick it on my first knot there. I don't know if you can see that. There's this uh, it's like a little nail here on the loom. And I just stick that on there to start with. And I'm grabbing my other end. Grab my other tail like this, kind of towards me. And then I will take this off of here. These are removable, which is nice. And I stick that kind of in between and I bring it towards me and then I twist it towards the limb and kind of roll it up. Now, I, I want this to be kind of even. If you want more thread on one end than the other, then you're going to want to wrap more thread on the end where you want more thread. But I want to keep it kind of even. So as I'm holding this, it's kind of hard to film on all one shot, I will twist this one here as I'm holding the other one in my hand and as I'm doing that that's bringing this one up here closer to its little cradle where you put it so I'm going to kind of I'm going up here I'm going to be twisting that one and see that one sets nice and snug I hope I got that all on film there it's kind of hard to film on my camera here my computer camera now we have them on there and they are on their notches and they're being held pretty steady and you can kind of tighten these a little you don't want them too tight because you're going to want to be able to adjust them a little as you adjust your loom so as far as getting these all on here and all straight you want to get all these threads straight so I'm going to bring that in a little I just take one at a time one uh, piece of thread at a time. And Ashley, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna turn this sideways for me. I like to, I like it to face vertically when I'm doing this, but since you guys are having a hard time, it might be a hard time to see. So I'm gonna actually go this way with it. That way, it's all in the screen. So we got our thread on both ends. And we need to straighten these out. And we want to get them as straight as we possibly can. And what I do is I just go one by one. Just kind of kind of eyeball it. Not have to be perfect. You don't want it crooked or anything like that. You want it as straight as you can possibly get it. And don't worry about the uh, ones all grouped together. Because they'll all get separated out as you go. And you just kind of go one by one. And you see, these are all, this is like a little spring here. And in between each spring is basically, that's about a bead length. And that's about how 
you want it spaced. Now, if you were to use larger beads, you'd probably have to go maybe in, in between every two, like move this one over and see so you can get a bigger space. But for what we're doing, this is going to be the perfect amount of space. So I'm just going in between each one. Now, if you had the larger ones, you could go in in between every other one or whatever and when I have smaller beads it looks like it's not going to fit and it might be a little hard for the first few rows but as you go it will tighten so you don't have to worry about it being any smaller than that so you want to go into each little spring coil there with your with every thread individually you want one in e each thread in its own little individual spring coil and you know, as you go, some will be a little bit looser. Don't worry about that. They will uh, we'll get a little more tension on those afterwards. Right now, we're just going to try and get it uh, straightened out here. And some might be a little more taut and harder to pull than others. That's okay. Like I said, it'll even out as you go. And an easy way to do it is I like to just kind of grab one. And then I just stick my finger under up underneath it, and then I just pull it on over to where he needs to go. And that's a nice, easy way to do it. Nice, easy way to get up underneath the thread. And like I said, this is the most time-consuming part of looming. After this, it goes really fast, and you don't even have to worry about it. You're just, like, busting it out. But this is the time-consuming part. But good things take time. Alright, we got 11 there. This guy's really loose. See how that's loose like that? But, I'm going to do it on this end here. Tighten that out. Maybe. Actually, we might have to, I might have to go over with that. That one's really loose for some reason. And it's a trial error thing. That's just how looming goes. Bring him over actually. So I'm going to pull all these over one. Just kind of bring it over a little bit. Now, everybody kind of, like I said, we all do things differently. I'm just showing you how I do it. And just want to help you guys get going on looming. It's a really fun. Once you get into it, it's really fun. This is like my favorite thing to do with beading besides the applique. And it just, the pieces come out absolutely lovely with these. But it's just about getting that initial setup. There we go. I kind of crossed him over and it tightened it up a little. But I went over one too many. So I'm going to bring all these back over one more. That one was really loose. And sometimes that happens with the way I tie I think it's the way I tie it on there. It causes it, causes you to have a little loose one here and there. But, you know, you can go further up or further down the, the uh, coil there and it can, it'll tighten it as you go. All right. So now we're all loaded up. And you want to check your tension. You don't want it like super tight, but you want it tight enough to hold on to the beads, you know. You don't want it to be uh I'm kind of cross backwards here. It's kind of throwing me off a little bit because I'm used to doing it that way. I gotta There we go. Just wanted to tighten my wing nuts on the side here. Tighten these guys. You want to get those tight after you've gotten it loaded so it's not rolling around on you after, after the fact. So, alrighty, so that's how you load your loom. And like I said, that is the most time consuming because you have to cut all those little threads and you have to put it on there and spread them all apart. So, that is going to take the most time out of your whole bead loom experience. I'm just going to count and see, double check, make sure that I have all of the proper number, the proper number of a uh, thread. 
All right, we got 12 on there, and that's exactly what we need. And see, this is uh, usually the part that scares everybody off. Everybody's like, eh, that's a lot of work, you know. It's not easy, like, just threading a needle and you're good to go, you know. It's one of those things that is highly time-consuming and just really, you can get tangled up and things don't set right on the loom. And once you get it going, though, it's really fun. All right, that's why I would recommend, like, if you're just starting off, to start small. Don't go crazy. Don't go with, like, I'm going to do a 25 across bead loom pattern. That's going to take a long time. I would recommend it for starters, something, you know, five or six. Just do five or six rows, you know, like, just do five or six of these. It's going to make it way more simple. You could even do, like, three or four, you know, just something to kind of get you started and get a feel for it make it a little more simple for you and kind of that way you'll know what you're doing when you want to do the big projects you know ease into it don't go crazy when you first start all right now to get our uh, let's see I think that's good to go we're gonna Now I think I'm going to call it good on this video. And then we've got everything set up. We have it all uh, ready for everything. We got what we need for supplies. We figured out uh, how to do patterns and how to figure that out. And then we also figured out how to get our loom set up and loaded and ready for beads. So the next one, we will actually start digging in and start doing some beading, which will be the fun part. <laughs> and I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching.